In this A-level IB biology video, we're going to be looking at the relationships between different species. And really, we're going to be looking at how you can sample those species. And that's obviously going to be using a quadrat, which I'll discuss later on in the video. I'm just using a previous video's definition of species here just to show you that a species is a group of organisms that can potentially interbreed to produce fertile offspring. So a horse is a different species from a donkey because although they can interbreed to produce that final picture which shows a mule, because the mule is infertile, it does not count as its own distinct species. So that was a little recap. The next thing for me to say is that the presence of two species within a given environment will be dependent upon potential interactions between them. And so what that really means is, is that if two species are typically found within the same habitat, they have a positive association, and if two species tend not to occur in the same habitat, then they show a negative association. So let's start by writing a few notes on what I've just said. So I've started off by saying the presence of two species within a given environment will be dependent upon their interactions with each other. If two species are found within the same habitat, so place that they live, then you have a positive association. If two species are not found in the same habitat, then clearly you'll have a negative association. To give this context, I want to mention some examples. So a positive association where we know two species are found in the same habitat will be species whose populations very much depend on each other. So for example, the predator-prey relationships. Foxes and rabbits will exist in the same area. Why? Because the fox is the predator which feeds upon the prey, which is the rabbit. Other examples include symbiotic relationships where both species depend on each other. Obviously the rabbit does not depend on the fox and the rabbit would much prefer it if the foxes weren't present, but symbiotic relationships are mutually helpful. A good example of symbiosis is the sea anemone and the clownfish. If you've ever watched Finding Nemo, the anemone offers protection to the clownfish and the clownfish chases away anything that might upset the anemone. So notice that clownfish does not feel the stings of the anemone. Now, negative association, so when two species aren't necessarily found in the same habitat, tends to be due to competition for the same resource, and one species effectively outcompetes the other one. So one species could use the resource more efficiently, effectively meaning that there isn't enough resource for the other species, and that's known as competitive exclusion. Alternatively, because the two species don't want to directly compete for the same resource, they may alter how they use a particular resource or use the environment in order to avoid direct competition with each other, and that's known as resource partitioning. Be very aware that everything I've just written is based on interactions between two species. If the species don't interact at all, there's no association with them, and therefore their distribution will be completely independent of one another. So they'll just go about living their own lives, not affecting each other in any way. Sorry about the dog. But how do we actually know about the presence of a particular species in an environment? And how do we actually register their numbers? And that's through using quadrat sampling. Hopefully you've heard of quadrats at GCSE and IGCSE. So here's a picture of a quadrat, which as you can see is a square frame. It has known dimensions and it can be used to estimate population densities. Now notice in terms of using the quadrat, it must be placed randomly over a particular area and that tends to be by using a random number generator. Then you count the number of individuals of a particular species and then you repeat and place many more quadrats and repeat the process and this will allow you to estimate percentage cover of a particular species. The results will tell you if the species are randomly placed, whether they are evenly spaced or if they're placed in particular clusters, so lots of individuals of the same species in one place. Just so you know, obviously this daisy over here that I've highlighted on the right hand side, that would be counted in that quadrat because most of it is present within the quadrat. 
if you find that most of a particular plant or animal is out of the quadrat, then you would not count that. Notice it can be used to measure both plants and animal distribution, but obviously animals are quite tricky because they move around so much. <laughs>